In this video, we're going to focus on the combo bar chart. And what we really want to do here is to create a custom tooltip or at least custom data depending on the data set. So in this case, what I want to do is for the bar, you can see here we have the total weekly sales. But if I go here on the blue line, it will only show the default data. But if I go back here on the bar, it will show here the total sales. So with this, we can start to control which data set show more information and which one not. So let's start to explore how to do this. Let's start to explore how to show different data in the tooltip based on the data set in a combo bar line chart in ChartJS. So the first thing what we need is to get our default code here. So what I'm going to do here is go to chartjs3.com, getting started. And this link you can also find in the description box. Scroll down and then just copy this entire code. I'm going to copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here, which explains it all. I'm going to paste all of that in there and then I'm going to cut out the title here and then I'm going to just put it in there, save, refresh, there we are. So now we have a bar chart and what I want to do now is to create a combo bar line chart. And basically with the bar chart I want to show the sales and I want to show some additional information but for the line chart I don't want to show, I want to just show the default standard line chart data. So I'm going to scroll down here and just going to first duplicate this copy this, put a comma here, and then paste it all in there. And then we can just say here, uh, target, target sales, for example. And this target sales, we'll just put in nine, 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 and again here, nine. And what I will do here, I'll just remove those colors here, and except for the second one. So we have a nice blue line. So once I did this, I will delete this, and then delete this one here save this refresh now we have a bar let's convert this into a combo bar line chart so we're going to say here on the border color we'll say type and this type will be of course the line chart save this refresh all right so if you look at this you might notice that if you look very carefully that the line is behind the bar so i want to convert it that the that the line will be in front of the bar so basically we're going to work with something very similar to index zero or in uh, sorry the z index in css there's another item here that we call order so i'm going to say order and the higher the order the farther away it is so the more it goes to the back so we're going to say here just think like a gold medal if you have a gold medal you're number one so you're the highest one you're, or you're the most important person so i'm going to say order this line will be gold medal and this one here will be the silver medal i guess that will be the best uh example to compare it with so if we save this and refresh you can see here now we are absolutely on top of it. All right. So now what I want to do is we have this data here. And what I want to show is I want to show additional data, like a total sum on the bars. So you can see here the weekly sales. And then we have the total sum just underneath. What we're going to do here is in the tooltips, I'm going to say a plugins. And in the plugins, I'm going to say tooltip. And then in the tooltip, what I will do here is I'm going to create a callback. So I'm going to say callbacks. So make sure your callbacks is an S, very important. And then we're going to say here, to make it good, because I want to eventually also assign a color design on it, or not really a color design, but the font weight will be different. So I will do it in the footer. And the reason why is because if I would do it within the body, where we have the label, as you can see here, like where the target sales nine is, and if we put it in the body, if we adjust there the body, uh, uh, font weight it will impact uh, impact everything and i don't want it i want to keep this original the only thing is i want to put a footer at the bottom basically a bottom text or on this bar here with total sales x amount which would be the sum of all of these bars here all right so to do this i'm going to say here footer and in the footer i'm going to say here the function is callback function is a context and then in the context what i'm going to do here put in here a function error expression because it's a comp it is a callback and then what I'm going to do here first of all let's do a console log context just to understand what do we get if we do this if I save this refresh open up developer tab all right you might get an error here so go to 105 of course no comma here will give you a unexpected error syntax error all right so now it works if I hover over this one here you will see we get some information and what we get is, and this is very important, we're going to get here the data index and the data set index. And this is the one we need, because if I move over the blue line, which will be another data set index, which is 
data set index number one. So we assume now, or at least that's my assumption, that you do know which uh, data set you want to show additional information, so you should have that ready. So in this case, I want to have the bar, which is data set zero, because it's the first data set we have. So what I'm going to do here, right? let's put in here just a very simple, I'm going to say return by default, and then return here, let's say yes, save that, refresh. If I do this, you can see everywhere it returns a default item, including the the line here, and you can see it in the bar. So you can see here as well, we have to go really specifically on this point area, or the hit point area, to target the blue line. So, all right, enough about that. Let's focus on what we need to do. What we need to do is we need to do a comparison, and this comparison is based here, the data set index. We have to say, if the item would be a data set index zero, in that case, show, or else, don't show. So we're going to create a very simple if statement here. So to do that, I'm going to just grab this and put it in there. If I do this, let me look here, I'm going to show you here, undefined. So why is it undefined? Well, the answer is simple. I'm going to cut this out, put it in here, back, refresh, do this, click on this, pay attention. This is index zero. So that would mean that there's an array assumption here, or at least there's an array in here. So we just need the first one. So we're going to save that there. And now if I move over it, you can see here, data set one, or sorry, data set zero, data set one. Data set zero, and here, data set one. Beautiful. So now we can start working on it. And what I'm going to do here is just a very simple if statement. If context data set equals strict zero, in that case, I want to say yes. Or else, I want to hide it, or don't even return anything at all. Because if we don't return anything, as you can see here, it will just remove it. As you can see, there we are. Doesn't show anything extra. All right, so we're almost done here, but what I want to do, of course, was the total sum. There was a specific question as well. So how do we add up the total sum in here? Well, let's go in, in here. What I'm going to do is the following. We can even do it in the if statement, so it's not even necessary to trigger anything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say a constant total sum. Let me delete that, all right. And then, what I need here is the following. I'm going to say here, uh, total sum equals, and what do we want here? Well, let me show you what I want. Let me comment out this first. I want to go up here. I want to go into the data here. And from the data, I want to go to data sets, index zero, because we get this specific data here. So from data to data set zero to data. All right, so I'm going back here. And then what I'm going to say here, total sum equals data dot data sets and let's put it in here we can now hard code this zero we can do this if you want that or we can soft code this how do we soft code it well remember what we have here copy that put it in there so you might say will it impact it no because we have a filtering system already if index equals zero in that case we will trigger this part else it will not trigger anything else so this doesn't matter anymore because it will not trigger as long as this condition is met. All right, so then we have this here, and then we're going to say it dot data. And then now what I want to do, just for the sake of it, console log, total sum, save that, refresh. Now hover over it, all right, so we get all these items here. Let's move over the blue line, nothing happens, beautiful. So we go here, here, blue line, nothing, all right. So this works, well, let's start to do the total sum formula because basically this entire array is already for us necessary to continue on. So what I'm going to do here is after the data, I'm going to use the reduce method, which is an array method to reduce the array data or numbers into a single number. So I'm going to say reduce, and then we're going to do here the following. I'm going to say a total and then data point. Basically the total is zero and the data point would be every item in here and what you want to do is you want to do first one will be 0 plus 18, and then after that will be 18 plus 12, and then etc. etc. So it will loop through the entire item here because of the array method of reduce. So what we're going to do here then, a function error expression, because we're going to return a specific value here. And this return value return will be very simple total plus the data point it will be just add on consistently until we're done and once we did that all semicolon here we have this 
Then, if I save that, refresh, and then if I hover over it, you can see here, we get 69. So we get the right number. Now what I want to do, of course, is to get the total sum. And what I will do here, I'm going to do here a uh, template literals, which would mean that I would do a special way of concatenation with backticks. So two time backticks here. So backticks, you can find it on your keyboard on the escape button. I'm going to say here, the uh, total weekly sales equals, and then here, dollar sign, and then open and close uh, curly bracket, and then put in here the total sum, which is a value or a constant. Once we do that, I can remove this, put a semicolon here, save that, refresh. Over over it, you can see here, weekly total sales, that amount, then we have here the total sales, or the target sale, which is just the blue line. Go back here, back here, back here, and there we are. So with this, you can do and play around everything in your tooltip because you can do it basically on the bar, on the line, or on any data set you want because basically it's built based on the data set. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to learn more about tooltip customization, I'm going to recommend you this specific video here on how to add more information in the tooltips in Chart.js, which is extremely interesting because you will learn almost any customization you need to know for Chart.js or for the tooltip in Chart.js.